The Cowboys bounce back in a divisional rivalry yet again as the Cowboys take down the New York Giants 20 to 15. The final score in week four of the NFL season Thursday night football at MetLife Stadium was kind to the Cowboys as we welcome you in to special edition. Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Glad you're with us as guys. It was never the prettiest win for the Cowboys. It wasn't always perfect, but it was a win, Barry Church. Yes, at true. the end of the day, when you're playing on the road in the NFL, that's the box you have to check. Yeah, exactly the box you have to check. And when I looked at this game, I still have a lot of questions on both sides of the football. But I will say I was impressed with that red zone defense. I feel like that was a difference. Forcing the Giants team to kick five field goals instead of having some touchdowns in there really proved to be the difference. Yeah, I don't want to be negative Nancy, but the reality is this team still has a lot of work to do, um, but they needed that win and they got that win and that's all that really matters to your point Kyle, you know, it doesn't matter how you do it. You know, it doesn't matter if you crawl, it doesn't matter if you if you, if you army crawl, if you, if you grab somebody's <laughs> hair, it doesn't matter. Get the victory. Okay, and now you're all of a sudden you're one and one in the NFC. You're one and oh in the NFC East and you have put yourself in a good position to be able to continue with your season. I'll be upbeat Larry did because I'm telling you I like what Mozzie <laughs> did. He flashed enough to to give himself some confidence so he can go into the this mini vacation to uh, help himself. I like the way Cooper BB handled himself against uh, Dexter Lawrence. He battled him all night, but I need for my man Tyler Guyton to spend a lot of time doing this mini by uh, working on his steps. Well, let's talk about the, the run defense a little bit there. We'll hit the offensive line later in the show, but uh, when it comes to the run defense in the front seven, they hold the New York Giants to just 26 yards on the ground. I mean, there were 26 yards per carry almost over the last two weeks. I mean, the way that the Ravens and the Saints ran the football. I mean, how encouraging is that, Barry, whenever you look at this run defense and how they've taken a step forward, at least against the Giants here this week? Yeah, I was encouraged by what I saw. I and mean, just like Nate said, you know, Mozzie Smith kind of showed up out there. But this is what it looks like when you play as a unit out there. It kind of looked reminded me of that Cleveland Browns game in week one. And overall, when you look at when you look at what they were able to do, they were able to hold the edge. The linebackers were able to run sideline to sideline free of linemen in their face. You saw the speed of an overshone out there getting the job done and Kendricks being downhill. That's what this defense can do and they have the ability to do just that and they went out there and proved that they can be a, a top rush defense if they play together as a unit. Playing together means that you are trusting the scheme and what we saw the previous two games coming into this game was the Dallas Cowboys being caught between trying to do what Coach Zimmer's asking them to do and wanted to actually win their assignments. To, and in this game against the Giants, these guys took care of business in the form of gap discipline, okay? So now all of a sudden you had defense alignment that were playing on half a guy, playing in actual gaps, which required double teams. When you have double teams on the defensive line, now your now your linebackers like DeMarvion Overshone, Kendricks, and Lily Fowl, those guys can now run and hit, and that's exactly what you saw in that Giants game. You know, when you don't have to relegate safeties to come up and help. You know, when your front seven play the way they play, our safeties will be able to help on the back end end a little bit more than they uh, normally did uh, these past two or three games. So, but I want to just reemphasize once again, if Mozzie continue to maintain uh, that, that line of scrimmage and create a new one sometime like he did last night, you will see more of Overshone and, and Marifau and, Kendrick, and Kendricks having a hell of a season. Yeah, really, he, it was probably his best game as a pro. Let's hear from Mozzie Smith after the 20 to 15 win. Everybody was doing their job. Everybody did what they're supposed to do. You know, and um, that's that's really how you stop it. It ain't no bells and whistles to stop a run game. Everybody do their job and do what they're supposed to do. That's how you stop it. Um, uh, you block out the noise. People be talking and chirping it. Uh, nobody worried about that. And if they worried about it, you know they worried about the wrong thing. So ain't nobody getting out there playing the run for us, with us. I don't care what they got to say. I mean, Isaiah, we've been very critical of mm -hmm. Mozzie Smith, a first-round pick. You expect him to have immediate impact, but the impact was finally felt in week four. Yeah, he took care of business. I mean, he showed up in a, in a better way than what we've been seeing him in the past. Um, and I understand. I like his mindset that he has. Ignore the noise. But the reality is, you know, we base our analysts based upon what we see on film. And last uh, in, in, in the game against the Giants, what we saw – was that he was gap disciplined. He actually played on their side of the line of scrimmage and he made an impact for his players to make plays behind him. And they're going to need him to make a more impact because there were a couple guys banged up in this mm. game. Talk about both of the star pass rushers for this Cowboys team, Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence, a little bit banged up. I mean, how does that hamstring you as a defense, Barry? Well, you, you got to pray that, you know, 
uh, Micah Parsons is, can come back healthy and extremely fast because after what I saw last night, without Parsons, this team cannot get pressure on the quarterback. And you saw Danny Dimes was able to go out there and pretty much dice the secondary apart. I mean, they, I think they walked away with maybe two sacks out there, but overall, you got to pray that Parsons is back because without him, there is no pressure coming from this defensive line. A lot of defensive storylines whenever it comes to this team out of their week four win as they take down the Giants 20 to 15 and get back to 500, but there's still a long way to go, as Isaiah alluded to. When we come back here on Special Edition, let's flip to the offensive side of the football. Looked like CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott got back on the same page. Can that be encouraging moving forward? Special Edition, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Reliant, official energy provider of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, invest like your icons with Blockchain.com. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. From the 45 first down, shotgun, good blitz pickup, and a Prescott down the left side to Lamb broke the tackle. 35 outruns, three men into the end zone. Touchdown, C.D. Lamb. From 55 yards out, C.D. Lamb loses a couple of defenders. He finds the end zone as the Cowboys find the win column in week four. Welcome back to special edition. That seemed like a connection working early. Dak Prescott to C.D. Lamb. We'll talk more about C.D. in a moment, but it was really Dak Prescott connecting with all of his receivers. He was spreading the football around a little bit better. 22 of 27 passing. What did you see from QB1? Accuracy. Tons of accuracy. I mean, there was not a lot of open or large windows for him to throw into. And he was doing a good job of just putting it in positions that the, only the receiver can get the ball. He was never at a risk in terms of turning the ball over. Um, he was high precision. He was 81% on his completion rate. Uh, he was just, uh, you know, dicing these guys up. Just call it how it is. Uh, we'd like to see some things more down the field, but they did what they needed to do in order to win the ball game. He was decisive. I mean, you talk about a lot, Isaiah, about being decisive three step out, five step out, seven step out. But this kid is doing it uh, by getting hit after every throw. Every time you turn around, somebody's leaking in on him. But he's staying focused and he's doing what he has to do, Barry. Yeah, to me, these are the games I love to see from Dak Prescott. You know, were the, were the numbers gaudy? No, they weren't. But they, they, he did exactly what he needed to do to get this team to win. And what impressed me the most about all of this, he did not turn the football over. Like you just mentioned, two touchdowns out there. He was accurate with the football. If it was up to me, I mean, if it was up to the guys out there, the wide receivers, he only put the ball where they can catch it, never in harm's way. And that's what you love to see with your rivals or from your quarterback. To me, this is the recipe for success, scoring touchdowns and not turning the football over. And finding your weapons at the same time. And he did so early and often, especially with C.D. Lamb, getting him a couple early completions. It was a much happier C.D. Lamb after the win at MetLife Stadium. Um, obviously, it's, it's more joy in here. Um, I mean, you lose two in a row, kind of start going through a phase where everybody is, is kind of uptight. Obviously, you're ready to play again and kind of get it over with, but good for us to uh, come out 1-0 this week. And it was very, it's the one we needed. You know, it was a division game, put us in the right place. Nate, you, you played with Michael Irvin, had a great relationship with him as a wide receiver. It was very known that you get him a couple gra grabs early, you give him a couple of opportunities to touch the football in the first and second quarters, and it can help turn into something special. How important is it for CeeDee Lamb to get those early grabs? It's, it's always important, you know, just get because he's going to be double team. People's going to be trying to close him out. If you can get him that ball early, it's just make him a, a bigger beast. And as the game grows, he grows. And all of a sudden, you got a monster in your hand by the end of the game. It's all about momentum. You know, you want to get your playmakers the ball in his hand, and that's really what it comes down to. This is the man who makes all the plays for you. He gets the mojo going. Your run game's not where you want it to be. You're not really in sync with any other receiver, so getting the ball in the hands of your number one guy is huge for this offense. Yeah, to me, this is what happens when you get all the 88s to football. I mean, when you talk about CeeDee Lamb, Michael Irvin, Dez Bryant, you get those, those guys with the confidence going early and their passion just takes over. And that's what we saw in the New York Giants game. These guys were able to dominate early and often and that confidence just kept growing. 
it is a lot to, to talk about because it was a frustration point from week three going into a short week. They found a way to get rid of that for the moment. It's still not perfect on the offensive side of the ball, but it's still something to grow on. And we're talking about some of those imperfections, but some of the things that worked well when we come back. Isaiah Stanback's going to take us into the film room, break down a couple of the Cowboys scores and their wins over the Giants. This segment was brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. This segment is brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. Lamb is in a slot on the right this time. Snap to Prescott, looks right, now goes screen left. Dowdle with a block to the 10 to the 5. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Rico Dowdle with his first touchdown since week 14 against Philadelphia last year, and it was opening the scoring for the Cowboys in their win over the Giants in week four. We've got Isaiah Stanback, our Emmy Award winning analyst, breaking down the film of how that one unfolded. One, it was a great play call follow, following a holding penalty that pushed Dallas back. Doesn't matter. Rico Dowdle does the rest of the work. Yeah, Rico makes it happen. This is a perfect screenplay right here. You guys are going to see Rico Dowdle back here in the backfield, and the guys are going to make this happen are going to be a number of guys, okay? It's going to be Mr. Uh, Ferguson is going to come out here and get a block, okay? You're also going to have Cooper Beebe work up and get to the next level, and then Tyler Smith's going to go out here and get a block as well. Getting these guys out is very important. So as we play it through, we see the motion. Fur goes out, okay? He's responsible for the man at the top of the screen. Boom, pause it right there. So Fur is coming out. Boom, he's responsible there. BB's working up to the next level here. Tyler Smith's now working up to this safety. And then obviously you have the man, the legend, who's going to be here responsible for getting the ball to the end zone as you play it through. Everybody does their job. Block at the top, block with BB, block with Tyler Smith, and boom, we're able to run past a block, beat one man, get to the touchdown for his first touchdown of the year. So not a whole lot to really break down. It's basically keep it simple. Do your job, and good, good things happen, yep, right? Absolutely. Let's go to the second touchdown here with C.D. Lamb. This is a little bit more of C.D. Lamb being a phenomenal route runner, a phenomenal yep. athlete, but also what happened to the backfield that happened to help this play happen? Well, the man that really makes this thing happen right now is going to be this guy right here, Dak Prescott. And the reason why Dak Prescott makes this play happen because his eyes are on the prize. He understands what's going on here, okay? As soon as Dak Prescott sees this slot defender with his eyes looking at him, why are you looking at me, okay? Why You have no reason to be looking at me. And then the other indicator is this man right here, this safety. Well, where? why are you stacked over this man right here? You should not be stacked over this slot guy. If you are stacked over that slot guy and your eyes are inside, I now know that you are doing what? You're blitzing, okay? So if you're blitzing, you're now rotating over. You're responsible here. You're responsible here. That means that my main man right here, C.D. Lamb, is manned up because this safety is now rotating back. So if I know that my main man, C.D. Lamb, is going to be manned up, then I know that he can run a go route and beat your guy all day long. That's exactly what happens. You look at the top of your screen. Here comes the blitz right here. Dak sees it. We pick it up right here with Deuce Vaughn. Great job. Okay, he's able to sit back. C.D. Lamb beats his man down here. Whoop, safety tries to come over the top. Whoopsies. Nope, not on duty. Hey, you see C.D. Lamb going out there and getting a little redemption against the Giants. Big time play by not only uh, Dak Prescott being able to recognize that these guys are blitzing. They did that on tape coming into the game. He was able to see that outside blitz. Deuce Vaughn did a good job of being able to say, okay, that's the guy that's coming. That's my responsibility. Let me block him up so Dak has time. And then C.D. Lamb just says, hey, if you want to play man-to-man -man against me, good luck. I dare you. You did it. My guy found me. I got the ball. Now I'm going to turn around and backpedal to the end zone. Dak Prescott's been one of the best quarterbacks in all of football against the Blitz. And because of that read pre-snap, it puts them in a place to be successful. This time, he just gets it to his receiver yep. early and often. The frustration last week from CeeDee Lamb, no longer the case. And it is something to look forward to moving into the future. When we come back, we, we're going to take a look around the NFL. Cowboys have their win in the books. Will Philadelphia follow suit? This segment was brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. One of the positives of the Cowboys playing on Thursday night is you get to enjoy the weekend as a fan in the NFL. Just take a look around the league and see what some of the other great games will be. And you don't have that high stress level. Mm -hmm. As we welcome you back to Special Edition with Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Let's take a look at some of the games to watch, starting 
But the team that knocked you out of the playoffs oh. last year, you got the Green Bay Packers hosting the Sam Darnold led and undefeated Minnesota Vikings. What's going on in Minnesota, Barry, to the point where the Vikings are now primetime television? I'll tell you what, not only Sam Darnold and Justin Jefferson out there are balling, but you also got to recognize what that defense is doing on that side of the football. I mean, they've gone against some heavy competition out there and they've shut some guys down. So that defense for Minnesota, they're playing at a high caliber, and so is Sam Darnold. Sammy to the Darnold is taking care of business and he has somebody that was loving the opportunity to go back to Green Bay and Mr. Aaron Jones. So with their ability to run the ball and throw the ball, they are a terror. It's sometimes guys just take a minute for guys to mature and then you get a head coach or offensive coordinator that understands who you are and what you're trying to do, man. Like you said, that defense ain't joking, so they're playing complete ball right now. We go from the NFC North to the NFC South. Let's take a look at, uh, or excuse me, NFC East. Mm -hmm. You've got, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you've got the Philadelphia Eagles, both teams at two and one. Lots on the line this week, Barry, between these two squads. What are you looking for in this one? Yeah, let's go Tampa Bay. I mean, big, we need to go ahead and go out there and, and make a show happen out there. You got Mike Evans on the outside. You got Godwin. They don't turn back the clock on these guys out there. They're playing at an extremely high level, and so is that defense for Tampa Bay. Let's hope they're able to shut down Philadelphia so we can be uh, tied for first place. Nice. I tell you what, man, they got two boys up front from uh, Georgia, uh, Philadelphia. Throw the ball. <laughs> Throw the ball, bro. Cause yeah, I don't think they're going to let you run it. And that Carter kid is coming. So, Philadelphia, a beast mm -hmm. defensively. Yeah, I like Philadelphia as well. I, I hope that they lose, obviously, just for the Cowboys' uh, benefit. But I think they're just a, a very strong team that the offensive and defensive coordinators that are brand new this year, Vic Fangio and obviously Kellen Moore, they're starting to figure out their units. And once those guys get things rolling with all the talent they have, they're going to be a problem. Some fan is out there, and he's going to clip Isaiah just saying, I like Philadelphia, mm. and that's it. That's going to take it out of context. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> We're going to talk about that later on in the week. Mm. All right, Seattle on the road against Detroit. How about this one? The Seahawks looking to keep flying high as they're 3-0 and and of course have a couple Cowboys connections in that coaching staff. But going up against the Detroit Lions, Barry Church, you're wearing your Lions blue. Ooh. Do you feel like they get it done this week? I do feel like they get it done. I mean, they got that that a big time monster in the backfield when you talk about those two running backs, Gibbs and uh, how was the Montgomery. Other? Montgomery. They, those two guys back there are unbelievable. We talk about the run game, but I will say this. Uh, the defensive coordinator from Baltimore that went over to Seattle is now the head coach. He has those guys flying on all cylinders, so so watch out for Seattle as well. Yeah, you need to watch out for them birds because them hawks <laughs> fly around, baby. Y'all know I'm from Seattle, but no, Seattle has a really good team. Their defense, you know, you just you just alluded to it. Obviously, Adam Dirty that came from Dallas, obviously the D-line coach, who's now the defensive coordinator up there. Uh, Mike McDonald, who's obviously the head coach. They're a defensive-minded team. They have the talent defensively, but offense as well. Their offense is lights out. The running game is solid, and they can throw this ball around. It's going to be a fun one to watch. Good weekend of football. There's only a couple of games where teams are more than a touchdown underdog. So mm -hmm. for this point. In the season, you love seeing those close lines. You see seeing tight ball games. Mm -hmm. Cowboys are home free. They already got their win here in week right. four. When we come back, how are they going to get the win in week five? TJ Watt is on his way to face this Dallas offensive line. He's going to be a problem. How do the Cowboys stop it from unraveling in Pittsburgh? Closed captioning is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. And to watch more Dallas Cowboys content on your connected TV, download the Cowboys Now app on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. Special Edition, presented by AT&T, was brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Wrapping things up here on Special Edition, back with Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, Nate Newton, I'm Kyle Yeomans. Normally, we give our keys to the game, but let's talk about how this Cowboys team can move forward. They've got T.J. Watt and the Pittsburgh Steelers coming up next week. What do they need to work on most, Barry? To me, continue to get CeeDee Lamb the football early and often. You saw what happened in that New York game. When you got the guys' confidence going, this offense it just clicks on another level. Yeah, I'm going to go on the, on the defense side of the ball. You got to find a way to continue to stop the run. Uh, you did a good job of holding these guys to 26 yards. Now you got a whole other uh, onslaught coming from Pittsburgh Steelers. 
our offensive line, we got to continue to build on this. We got to find a way to help guide him. We got to take away that inside move, guide him. We got to find a way to help him do that. Yeah, and there have been guys that have been taking advantage of that for the last couple of weeks. Tyler Guyton going to have to be better going into that matchup. It is a mini buy for the Cowboys. So we mentioned the injuries to Parsons and Marcus Lawrence. I mean, both of those things were certainly uh, – it's better now yeah. because yes. you have more time to rest up, get healthy, going up against Pittsburgh and what will be a, an interesting matchup in week five. For Isaiah Barry, Nate, I'm Kyle Yeomans. We'll see you next time with more special edition from the Star in Frisco.